Hello and uh, welcome to Simon on the Sofa. Um, today I'm uh, out and about again and I'm with a um, very recent uh, uh, friend and uh, this is Dave. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Hello, and uh, I've uh, yeah I've come to uh, t to meet uh, Dave today at his place, and um, we you know I hope you uh, hope you can uh, stay for this talk. So I've I've been looking forward to uh, meeting Dave. He's up to some really uh, interesting stuff, and like me, has had a, uh, a a you know quite a few big realizations in relation to society and ourselves and how uh, conditioned and programmed we are, and uh, yeah, so. Um, I've already been uh, speaking this morning, so hopefully we can capture some of that uh, again uh, in the talk. And uh, yeah, enjoy the talk. So, how are you, sir? I'm good. Yeah, actually. good. Yeah. Thank you for uh, allowing me to come and meet you. And, no problem. It's, you know, it's great. Yeah, and talk, talk on the uh, good sofa. This is the first red sofa. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not mine. I don't have, I have hardly any possessions anymore, so yeah. Uh, good stuff, good stuff. Um, so, y yeah, basically, I'd, I'll... Um, I loved what we were talking about before, so I'm going to bring that up again, just about okay. how, you know, how we both uh, agreed that through my realisation that I had, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, and then uh, <clears throat> from that, that, that realisation, which a lot of people listening will probably uh, have heard me speak about it, is uh, I call it the unconditional love, you know, realisation or epiphany or enlightenment, awakening, right. you know, whatever. Words are just, as you know, uh, misleading and, you yeah. know, <laughs> we latch on to them and so on. But I just had a, um, an awakening to looking deeply at myself, but then also through looking further deeply at myself, also mm. seeing, you know, the world in a different way. Um, right. And, uh, you know, from that then realising certain structures that seemed very false and built on, you know, fear, and then also um, realising that, you know, a lot of pain and suffering that I was seeing is really futile. It's, you know, it doesn't need to be there if people sort of, you know, wake up to sure. the truth. Yeah. yeah? Um, and you had a similar sort of experience. Absolutely. Um, and pretty much about the same time as you did yeah. as well. Um, I was I was working in um, living in a state and working in uh, New York City, um, uh, Wall Street. And I had the big house, um, you know. I had a, you know, I had a nice car, and had, uh, you know, lots of money coming in. Everything, it, my life looked looked like it was perfect. Yeah. Um, and then I, I guess I had a midlife crisis. You know, I, I think that's what they pe people call it. Yeah. It's, I think it's more more like a midlife awakening. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. And I, I realized, kind of realized, I had a vague inkling that there was something wrong with, with my life, with me, with with the world. Um, and I did what I guess what most middle-aged guys do when they have this. I went out and bought a Ferrari. And I thought, <laughs> well, most middle-aged. I oh, okay. say, yeah, might, <laughs> some might go and buy a car. It might not be a Ferrari, but yeah, I get you. <laughs> so you went out and got a lovely Ferrari. Yeah, and I, I stopped bombing around in it for a little while and kind of realised, well, that, that's not it. So what, did you think the Ferrari was almost a, a symbol of, of maybe freedom or something? Yeah, I, th I, th I think I needed something, or, yeah. or there was something missing, or um, there was something not right. Okay. And maybe I, I thought I needed to capture, you know, recapture my youth. Yeah, totally. When I was a you know, boy racer, whizzing yeah, around. of course, I was um, one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, but that wasn't it. Yeah. And I, I, I then decided to try and... So, you know, take a step back and, and have a look at what my life was yeah. and um, and again on the surface it looked like you know the perfect life yeah but then I started you know tugging at some of the threads of it and realized that my my marriage was was a sham yeah you know I, I didn't have the relationship I thought I had with my my kids interesting yeah um, my, my son particularly I thought I had a good relationship with him and but then I realised that um, I, I didn't really know him mm. as much as I thought I did. Yeah. Um, and so my my marriage ended. Um, 
And what you was the, that you was, you was the, the instigator of that as well. You just you, you noticed that and you just thought this, this well, has to uh, end. One, uh, not not in such cold terms. No, it was no, more like, not like um, hey, see you later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. it was it was more like uh, I. I I tried to try to fix what was what was wrong in the marriage, and um, when I realised I, I couldn't on my own, yeah. I kept taking steps away. Yeah. And uh, but every step I'd said I would say, um, okay, I'm here now. Yeah. This is what you have to do to fix it. Yeah. You know, if you want to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, the, so, so there was a mutual uh, communication. There was there was deep communication. Well, or? I, I wouldn't say no. there was mutual communication. I, okay, I'd say that, and uh, I'd get like a stunning silence. And, yeah. Um, but you know, I I took steps away. But, yeah. Um, and she never took any steps towards me. So, yeah. so the the gulf got bigger and bigger. Yeah. Um, so, so basically, it's funny you should share share that, which is uh, which is so true, but. I don't know, we, we were speaking also, it happens um, not just with necessarily f uh, family and, and relationships, but as, as you start to see things differently and share that, we don't always know how to communicate that straight away, do we? No. I mean, I, I, I definitely didn't. So, you know, it's no. like, you don't know how to communicate, but you know that there's something wrong. You start to make actions towards it. And basically, it's just, it, this has happened to so many people that I've read about as well. Is it just, it's a natural thing, isn't it? If somebody is aware of it too and they're ready to go with it, then, then you get that mutual move together, yeah. don't you? Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just, it, it, no words can really describe it, but it will just happen because two people get what's happening. But if not, you just have, to, it just has to go like that, doesn't it? Exactly. And, and the other thing that was happening at the same time was, uh, um, I, I, I started to write a book, um, and it was, well, at first it was my, you know, airy fairy ideas of what was wrong with the world. And, you know, um, it was a bit silly, really. I was yeah. just pulling things out of my, my, the back of my head. You was venting, right? You was that was your release. Yeah, I was, I was just yeah. just writing. I did the same journals. Yeah. loads of journals. I okay. told you, didn't I? Yeah. just every day, journals, journals, journals. Yeah. Um, but I got to the point where I thought, well, you know, if I'm not going to write a book, I, I ought to put some facts and figures in there and, and make it a real book. Um, so I started researching, um, you know, what was wrong with the world. Yeah. And I came out with, I found out so many amazing and terrifying things. Um, and, and that was, again, that was part of our breakup because um, I was finding all this stuff out that challenged my world view mm -hmm. completely. It turned my world view upside down. And, um, and I'd, you know, I'd naturally want to share it with, with my wife and, you know. Yeah. And the people closest and to you. Yeah. And, I, I was kind of shocked to find that, uh, you know, she was, I, I don't, don't want to call her a sheep, but yeah. um, she was, she was closed closed, to totally close-minded yeah. to it. Um, so that, that shocked me. I, and my, my daughter, to an extent, was the same, th same way. Um, my, my son um, actually got it. Um, a lot more. A lot. I mean, I could talk yeah. to you about him in a, in a little while, but he's like... Um, he he actually got it and he put it into practice uh, yeah. as well. Um, but yeah, he he got it. But you know, two two of the closest people to me didn't yeah. and didn't want to get it. Um, and, and how did that feel for you? Did you feel frustrated from that? Was it like you know? Because because the minute you hear, it's the same. When I see a documentary, for example, and I've seen uh, and this has happened to me and my partner as well, and and even you know people around, is that you 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 think, oh my god. I, look at this! This is a, I, oh my god! Can you believe that's happening? Look, you want to share it, don't you? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I send it to people. I mean, I've stopped doing that now, and that's why I've created you have to, Simon on the sofa. I'll be honest with you. The reason, one of the reasons I've created Simon on the sofa is also to share this content with people that want to hear mm. the content. Because there's, you, even your closest friends, you think, well, I'm going to share to them about we sp spoke earlier spa tame or or about the the abuse on the animals or what's going on with the dolphins or the sharks or or whatever's going on in mm. society because you think they're going to really enjoy it the, the, they're going to really well, they're gonna appreciate be as, it they're going to be as amazed as, as yeah. you are and, you're going to be yeah and that's that's not the case and i i, I mentioned to you about um the experience i had with my the, my workmates um you know the the company bought in a, a new fridge and they filled it with all these soft drinks um you know low calorie drinks you know i took one look and it was like you know spartame city i was like oh, yeah good grief well no <laughs> yeah say no to that yeah today. yeah so um so I, I put that one back and uh my one of my colleagues came in and um 
went, reached for the handle. I said, you know, I'll take a, you know, before you drink one of those, um, I don't know if you know about Spartane, and I, I kind of laid it out to them. Yeah. Um, you know, they kind of, their eyes went glassy as I started talking to them. Um, and they said, oh, okay. And reached in, got one, and started drinking. I was like, oh. Yeah, of well, course. If you, if there's a possibility that what you're going to drink has poison in it. Yeah. And it's going to numb you down in some way, make you feel, make you, well, make you want to put on weight. You know, make you make you feel lethargic, or do, you know, whatever the, the, the melt symptoms. Melt the brain cells. Melt the brain cells, exactly. You know what? You know, totally. I and, hear you. you know, you, why would you carry on drinking it? Well, you'd at least take a minute to to r just check it out before you you, you drink it. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I think I think people because when when they hear the word poison, they kind of expect that you know you drink it and you're going to fall down dead. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, if you watch, watch any of these old films when, when the wicked stepmother um, wants to poison a child, it's a little bit. Yeah. And what happens is, you know, the, the child gets a little sick and then sicker and sicker and the doctors will misdiagnose them and say, OK, we'll treat this, but the kid keeps getting sicker and sicker. Yeah. Um, and that's what's happening in this, this society. You know, we're, we're, we're drinking the fluoride, we're, uh, you know, we're having this aspartame and the MSG and all that. and we're getting very sick. Yeah. You know, people are, are getting diabetes, or supposedly getting diabetes, and but there's no, I mean, and how many? Yeah, there's, but there's so many different strains of of, of illness now, anyway, isn't but, it? It's the new one every day. Yeah. Like, okay, what's this one? I don't know what it's. I don't know what it's really from, but let's associate it to that one and call it right. You know, but you know, the the point is, it's not it's not any of these diseases. The root cause is the fact that we're eating and drinking all these poisons. And you know, and they're, and they're they're killing us slowly. Yeah, slowly wiping. Yeah, slow, yeah. Slow, slowly, like you say, slowly um, uh, poisoning the intestines and and breaking down the right. immune system and so on. So um, it's it's just very very frustrating when yeah when you try and impart this information because you you know it's not that you want to be um, you know better than anybody and say well I know more than you yeah of course it's just not. that you want to share this to to help people yeah totally no it's it's a very true point so so. Um, and, and the other thing is, is if you are a helper, I'm, I'm very much a helper, so you know I want to help people all the time and so on. But there is, a, there is a, I suppose one of the things that I started to learn, and I don't know how you feel about this, but it just comes to a point where you just got to just continue to help yourself. And I know, you know, the old saying of be the change, but just do what you need to do in order to, you know, move on. So stop the fluoride, stop the aspartame. You know, for example, I've stopped eating meat and certain foods because of the amount of uh, mm -hmm. chemicals in them and the way the animals are treated and so on, you know. So I, I, certain areas that I've, I, I've done myself, which I've just moved myself out of there. And, and again, now it's not, it's almost like, I don't mind if anybody eats meat or, you know, eats any of it. I don't mind. If, if somebody wants to drink the Coca-Cola, drink the Coca-Cola. Mm. I just choose not to. Right. And, uh, and I think what, what that then does, which coming back to with your wife, is then it just naturally changes your vibration. Yeah. So then you have to, you just move, don't you? You move into areas where, for example, you start to associate and attract people that are, you know, in tune with what you're doing, right? Yeah. And... Um, going, this is this kind of ventures into a bit of spirituality um, mm -hmm. because this being the change. Um, I was I was never a very spiritual person ever at all. I was an, a total atheist. Um, spirituality was for hippies and, and, and stuff, so totally out of it. Um, but then I started getting, you know, learning about quantum physics and actually understanding it, and 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 I started seeing that physics and spirituality and um and philosophy all started to merge yeah um which is happening dramatically at the moment as yeah well. and and the way i see that when about being the change is that the the universe is is uh, like a fractal like the mandelbrot set that we, we've seen it's it's a uh, it's just the infinite sort of view um that's it's just cycles around and we're just looking at, at one particular level, we're focused on one level, but there's infinite levels below us and infinite levels above us. Yeah. And, but we're in the center of it, and you know, anything we change, changes at all levels. Yeah. It's, um, it's like, um, we were talking about uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide. Yeah. Um, uh, Douglas Adams, 
um, he, he created this idea of uh, this starship that was powered by, it's called the Starship Bistro Math, and it's powered by the, in, the uh, interaction that happens in a, in a French bistro. Yeah. Okay? So, you know, you, you sort of uh, send your meal back and that in some way powers the ship okay. to do whatever, yeah. you know, and you, you, you argue with the waiter and that's part of the whole thing. Yeah. Um, so the energy coming from those things are creating the, the, the power of the ship. Yes, and, and the, there was something really profound. I think, I think actually Douglas Adams is a genius on the power of, um, power of Einstein. Um, the, the, the profound part of that is it expresses this, this whole thing I just mentioned about the, the sort of um, the levels. Yeah. Because at some level, you know, we, we, we are creatures made up of um, you know, millions and billions of, of separate conscious you know, tiny beings, yeah. you know, ourselves. Yeah. And they're living, dying, fighting, arguing, yeah. doing, and their meaningless interactions are causing us to be us. Yeah, of course. And then at that level, so at our level, our meaningless interactions are causing something yeah, of at a higher level. Yeah. And, and so on upwards and so on downwards. Yeah, totally. Infinity. Yeah, so beautiful. So a change that we make really does affect it affects everything everything and, it, and always has yes yeah so that's why i see it it's like you know when you dive into a mandelbrot set you know you'll see all these complex landscapes unfolding and what's a mandelbrot set oh you're not seeing it come it's, on it's, come on it's break, break, the, break, the, teach me man <laughs> teach me okay um <laughs> it's it's if you look at fractals yeah okay you um you'll hear about the mandelbrot set it it looks like a big black beetle it's um, some circles with a, a circle on top and you'll see little circles. Basically, it's the idea that uh, you start off with a, a simple shape and a, a very simple rule. And you just keep iterating that rule over and over and over again. Infinite times. Infinite times. Yeah. And, and you get a, a, this, this pattern emerge um, and of infinite in complexity. And you can actually delve into that, that pattern. And, it, you know, if you just keep it, you get a computer to keep repeating that rule, that simple shape and that rule, and you'll, you'll get an infinite amount of complexity, you know, you can dive in for, forever, and you'll, you know, you'll just keep Constant. diving in. Or you can, you can zoom out and get the same thing. Amazing. But eventually, so if you, if you zoom into the corner of this big black beetle shape, you will eventually come back to the same shape. Okay, amazing. Um, and Complete it, cycle. Yeah, and uh, whether it's the exact same one you started with or another one, you doesn't would, matter. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah, you wouldn't And know. it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no need to know that. Yeah, it's, but that's the thing. It's just, just infinite and it's, um, it's, yeah, and I think that's the way the universe works. I yeah. think, you know. So, so and you've, you've been, you, you've, because like you said, you wasn't even, you, I mean, we're talking how long ago, how long have you, your transformation occurred? Over the last, you said, two and a half years, is that Yeah, sort so of that? two and a half, three years. Two and a half, um, three years, yeah. And so until that point, I was uh, your corporal, just, corporate you just slave. Corporate slave, in the system, going yeah. along, wanting the big car, da da da. Yeah. And then now, as you've evolved, again, because I often share this, and it's, it's lovely that it's come up now, is that, you know, um, people sometimes, you know, it's a, it's a transition of, of events that occurs. It's because now you're saying that you're open to quantum theory, uh, spiritualism, f a lot deeper philosophy. You've even shared some, some philosophers with me, Alan Watts and yeah. a few others that, that, that um, you know, that uh, I haven't been aware of and now you've opened them up to me. And, you know, so, so now with that newfound um, feeling, isn't it? It's a mm. feeling, a knowing you know, you can't yeah. really, words can, as I always say this on the sofa, but words can't really describe it, can they? We no. were both saying earlier that, you know, words can't really, uh, you know. Um, so just, just, just going from that, so when, when, the, when you, um, you, you changed that, you broke, uh, you broke uh, the relationship, just, you know, your wife and you split up, and then, you know, now your children are here today and you're building mm. good relationships with them, right? Well, yes, I, th I think... Um my relationship is now, now that I've, I've realised that, uh, I realised that, you know, that on the surface before it was, it seemed like a, a, I had a good relationship with him and, you know, um, I've woken up to the fact that I didn't, which was pretty hard. Mm. Um, um, I, you know, I've been able to 
you know, uh, connect with them more. Yeah. Um, my son is now not angry. Uh, he was an angry boy um, at one point, and I, I didn't, I didn't even see it. I didn't even know. It. Yeah. Um, and was you angry? Do you think you was angry since your realization? Because you know what I always believe is that we were, you know, our outer world is a reflection of our inner. Mm. Yeah. And you know, as we do more deep inner work, because you've been doing inner work. That's what you've been yeah. doing for two and a half years, right? Three yeah, years. I suppose so. You've yeah. been going in, yeah? You've been yeah. looking at yourself, looking at the, the, like you said, seeing which f things didn't work, and you've been taking a, an observatory viewpoint, haven't you? Mm. Of yourself, yeah. fundamentally, and that's what took you on this path. So would you say that at that time you might have been angry within that, and that was, that was causing your son anger, or...? <sighs> maybe, maybe. Or maybe there was no connection there. I think, I think it was, um, I think my son perceived what was going on um, you know, in in a relationship, and mm. and and he was fighting against that. I, I yeah, I'm still trying yeah. to work that one out myself. No, totally. But um, but he's you know, with our relationship now, he's he's not angry. Okay, good. And uh, for the first time, um, I mean, he's opened up to me and. Um, and I've opened up to him as well. Beautiful. So it's, yeah. uh, well, that's amazing anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Even if just that came from it. Yeah. How beautiful is yeah, that? I, I know. <laughs> Honestly. It, yeah. And this is, you know, this is what it's all about for me, is just that deep communication which breaks away fear, which mm. breaks away, you know, anxiety and allows that beautiful connection, you know, of oneness, of unity, of mm. love, you know. And, and, you know, since that's happened, I mean, I've... Uh, I'm I'm actually blown away by my son. He's uh, mm. uh, he's an amazing kid. Yeah, um, lovely. Uh, anyway, yeah. I'm yeah. Not no, 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 it's good. It's nice getting all sentimental. <laughs> it's beautiful. And it's a uh, really really nice story to hear. Nice to hear a father talk like that as well. Mm. Being honest with you, I mean, my dad my dad left when I was very young, and then I had a uh, stepdad from two onwards, and then he he also left um, when we was young, and left my uh, brother, who you know. Uh, my younger brother as well and you know I just feel that again no resentment whatsoever to these to, to, to both of those but mm. more importantly is that it's all about communication yeah people you know you you peel off you do things because the communication is always wrong either we get into relationships because we get you know we're not communicating right to ourselves so we mm. get into you know diseased uh, you know non you know, you just don't have communication. We've lost how to communicate in relationships, and and, and definitely, I don't know if you've noticed this with your p uh, parents, but definitely um, parents to children. Mm. Do you see what I mean? So it's refreshing yeah. to hear that you know a father's really making that you know effort and also getting the, the interaction with uh, with their children. Well, that was that was why I was so shocked at finding out that I didn't really know know my son or my my daughter. Um, was because my dad was, uh, well, my dad, I, I don't know my dad as mm. such. I mean, um, he was, he's been around for the, the first um, maybe 14, 15 years of my life. Yeah. But, um, but he's a, he was a loner and I, I, I literally don't know him. Yeah. Um, uh, I haven't seen him for 20 years, near enough. Um, and he has no in desire to see me. I don't really have any desire to see him. Yeah. But I, from from very a very young age, I decided that that was not going to be the father I'm, I was going to be. Yeah. But so to find that um, I didn't really know who my son was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it, it was hard. It was hard. Yeah. Because um, you was almost re through the blueprint of what had happened. You was almost probably not reenacting completely because I don't know what you, you what you was like or your father but do you see what I mean that that, I was that, going, that blueprint was going, was going down the same path way. I was going that yeah way. isn't that fascinating and not knowing it and yeah not, realizing and not knowing it. it completely unconscious yeah so um so yeah it was it was it was a shock to me but it was good that I've been able to kind of pull back from yeah, it yeah, and yeah. go good back to my yeah. original plan good, yeah. yeah and now you're on now you're on a, a better, I, a better I, route I think so I hope yeah, so you yeah. hope so yeah. I might be speaking to your son later so I'm going to ask him okay. <laughs> <laughs> that means I'm better, well, yeah, you better I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be sitting over yeah, there so you're like that you, you Oi, watch yourself watch yourself <laughs> I'm, I'm listening in here he's going like, okay yeah I say good things uh, um, okay beautiful so okay that's amazing and, 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 and as always you, it's lovely to hear, as I said a few times. So now, with this this new energy you have, this new vision you have, um, you're, you're working on some amazing stuff, aren't you? And you're, 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 you know, you're you're slow. You're in a transformational stage again, right? Yeah, really. Yeah, I it, guess it's so. constant. Yeah. 
like the uh, like the circles. I think know? we all are. We all we? are massively. Yeah. yeah. So um, um, yeah. So you know what you what, what you up to now and what's your sort of what's your direction at the moment with this new you, as it were. Oh, okay. Well. Um, Part of uh, the book that I ended up writing, um, which will never be published, it was, you know, I, said, I guess it was just as, as your journals were yeah. to, to it crystallise out. it in, yeah. in your own head. Um, part of um, what, what I came up with in this book was uh, a solution. The, 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 the aims of the book were, as silly as it might sound, were save the planet, um, protect mankind from extinction, uh, live sustainably and give everybody happy or more meaningful lives. That's lovely. High that, five that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, why is that silly? That's amazing. Well, it sounds like a book I would like to read. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, the solution I came up with was uh, essentially going back to the early agrarian uh, era, where, which was before the uh, arrival of, of cities and states and and therefore police and co courts and governments and all that. Um, back to the stage where we, we first as humans um, you know discovered our agriculture and were farming the land and so everybody had their own sort of little plot of land and they would they'd farm it and uh, any surplus they had they would barter for other other things. Um, Swap resources. Yeah. And the idea was to go back to um, a version of that, but with what we've learned over the last uh, yeah, 3,000, 4,000 exactly, years. Yeah, because we've learned a lot, right? Yeah. And technology's changed and so on. Right. Okay. And, and so the idea was that we, we could build um, houses that could power themselves, could produce their own food, um, recycle water and waste. Um, just be essentially life support environments, mm -hmm, nice. you know, rather than just these decorated shelters we, we've lived in yeah. for thousands of years. They haven't really improved any, have they? Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, you know, they've got indoor plumbing and electricity, but apart from that, they're the same yeah. Sh shelters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're just boxes, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, totally. So you know, with 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 resources being filtered into them which is fundamentally not actually sustainable in any way and doesn't actually you know we, we get charged for it and it's not to say that it's not good to have a home and, and, and electricity of course it is it's amazing but also you know the, the energy is charged obscene amounts for as well when it doesn't have to be right well it's because you know corporate interests have got involved yeah so thought, how can we monetize so, this yeah rather than us being able to power our own house yeah you know, yeah. we've got into this idea that somebody has to provide power for us. Yeah, because if it, somebody turns the electric off or the gas off tomorrow, what, yeah. everyone's stumped, right? Oh, yeah. and Buggered. Everyone's going to, well, I imagine everyone's going to be facing that at some point yeah. in, in the very near future. Exactly. Um, so, so, yeah, if we, if, we had, if we had houses that could, could do that, um, you know, using any automation that we've, we've figured out, you know, um, then we could live. We could live in smaller communities. You know, we wouldn't have to all gather together in cities and big these huge conurbations um, because you know we, we need to work and we yeah. need to do all this because we wouldn't need to work. Yeah, we wouldn't need money. You know, um, we could have these these uh, communities of these houses that yeah they would generate all these resources, but they might generate surplus resources and and each of these houses can share automatically share these resources yeah okay in a kind of internet like fashion yeah um, right now we're in a kind of um, mainframe view of the world where um, resources are generated centrally and they're filtered down to everybody you know um, below them yeah and as you say if they switch off the uh, yeah. power there Nobody gets it. Well, you control. Uh, it's happening in Africa and parts of uh, India anyway, where you're completely controlled, <coughs> completely controlled by the the mainframe, and uh, and then what are you controlled by? You're then controlled because you need to eat, you mm. need water, and you need shelter. Right. Three main things that we need. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, we die. Yeah. yeah. Or the human vessel dies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, how do you control a mass amount of people in any one way? Is those three things. Yeah. Simple, and that's how we're all controlled. Right. Right. Exactly. So yeah, that's but that's the mainframe model where each of us are dumb terminals, you know, yeah, yeah, and it's all you know it's all controlled centrally, mm -hmm. and uh, we we need to move to a new paradigm, and that paradigm is more like the internet, where on the internet 
every every server you know every computer is a server yeah and it has its own resources yeah yeah and then they network together and they make something that's even bigger than the sum of its parts yeah so if you imagine these houses that are um, you know producing resources and surplus resources that means you end up um, with this network that um, the more people in the network the more there is to go around yeah rather than the other way the more yeah. there's in the network the less there is yeah so it's all about it's all about it's also mm. about <coughs> it's also about support sustainability and giving yes because the more you give law law is that the more you receive yeah. so when there's no fear of giving because you because normally the fear is is that i don't want to give because if i give i'm going to be without be out, yeah. yeah whereas when, when, when people shift that consciousness into that more loving cradle to the grave mentality mm. then it's give isn't it yeah. it's like well great i've got this of course i want you to have it yeah. take that please and that and that because i'm okay and as that comes again i get in yeah, now like okay well, what do you need okay you need that so you create this beautiful cycle yeah, which which is self-sustaining. Which you know, it's funny because we could do that today. We could we could go into that that system right now. Yeah, even with these boxes. Even with these boxes. Yeah. Even with all this, if if we if everybody realised that uh, all that's happened is that uh, a uh, I've got to call them a psychopathic elite have just overlaid their system over the top of this idea that we can. You know, we can share everything, yeah. and they've they've made it so that we're we're scared, and um, you know, um, we're scared for us. We're scared about we're scared everybody everything. else. Yeah, we we fear fear itself. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, it's funny. It's funny. It's funny. You brought that up because I was uh, talking with somebody else on uh, uh, on the uh, on the sofa, and uh, the 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 main thing is is that the question I asked was how I can't remember if we uh, if we put this bit in, but the question I asked was how would you control 6.7 billion people? You know, if you, if you really had to think about it, how could you control them? I mean, obviously, the free resources that we just said there sure. is definitely one, but also fear. Yeah. Because nobody will do anything if they're scared. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's the primary, isn't it? You know, you don't, go, you don't get angry or do anything if you're scared because you're, so, you're, you're more scared of the outcome than actually the abuse you're taking. Sure, yeah. How mad is that? Yeah, absolutely. That's um, completely mad. So yeah, so go on. So you have this amazing idea. So that's coming. So so yeah. I mean, um, the 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 point is though that it's, um, everybody can live independently. If your house is pr providing you with everything you you need to live, then you're independent from everybody. Yeah. You can live independently, but that's not going to be allowed, though, is it? It's it's not. That's that's the thing. That's, um, the, that's the big point, isn't it? The main the main point here is because because there's Mark Boyle. I don't know if you've heard of a guy yeah, called the Mark Boyle, man. the moneyless man. Right. Mm. So he's all oh, funnily enough written a book mm. about his his experience. And now uh, the last uh, video I heard on it is that <clears throat> he's going to sell the book and potentially with the money from the book. Mm. Now, I don't know how much you make from the book. I know not that much, depending on how many people buy it. Of course, yeah. he's going to then start to build this. Um, you know, I don't know if you've heard this, this uh, sustainable, his idea of a sustainable living. Then obviously you've got the eco villages coming up and right. so on. Right, so, but the point is, is, you know, the electricity, the guys that controlling the electricity and, and so on, they don't, they don't want a sustainable... No, they don't. They don't want a sustainable uh, uh, a community. They don't. And you Where's know, the money in that? The thing is, the you're saying live without money, where's the money in yeah. that? The governments don't, yeah. you know, it's all the same. Government and big business are all the same. Yeah. They're all the same group. Um, and you've worked in big business, right? I've worked in big business. Yeah. Um, they don't want it. They, ob they obviously don't want it. The government might so sound like they're, they're, they want green... Greener things. ways or, 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 or um, you know, because everybody could have solar panels in their, in their uh, houses today. Yeah. And, and the thing about solar panels and wind energy and stuff, it's... it's oh, I was going to say... Bollocks, but <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. You can, you're allowed to swear on the sofa. Okay. But nice words, like my, nice swear words. Actually, it's my sofa, so I will. <laughs> <laughs> it's your sofa. So let, let, get the aggression. No, but it's a sham, right? Yeah. I mean, um, solar and wind. I mean, they're the they're the um, inefficient technologies that, that we're allowed to have because they pose no threat to oil. Yeah. Okay. If there was something, and there are so many, um, you know viable technologies you know we, we hear about them all the time we hear about them you know we hear about some wonderful inventor yeah and then it goes quiet yeah well I heard one recently I can't remember what he did but he, he, he they created something in Ireland 
and, and Storm, I think they called it. Um, what? Storm. Yeah, that sounds yes. very familiar. Yeah, they sounded like they they had a, it was a magnetic motor. Yeah. Um, and what and happened were, to that? I didn't hear anything. I know. They had a company, they had a website, the whole yeah. the whole lot just went completely quiet. That was about of, a year ago. There are lots of magnetic motors out there. These motors just you know, set them going and off they go, and they'll, they'll they're powerful and they just don't stop. Yeah. Um, you and know, they've got one here, right? They've got a, a kind of version of one that I'm I'm working on called a Bedini Energizer. Yeah. Um, which which, is, which can power? He was telling me. Yeah, it's massive. Uh, I, I did a, a I did a little test of one with a, a single coil and um, a little hard disk platter mm -hmm. with a couple of magnets stuck on it, um, and that one was able to charge four car batteries from one small twelve volt Radio Shack battery. Yeah. Um, and there's, that's from the horse's mouth. That's done. Yeah. That, that's not. We're not. This is not a lie. This is not no. You know, making up stories. This is done. You can find this on YouTube. Yeah. I, I, I was filming as I was doing it, and I was like, uh, actually, in one bit, I had a, um, a, a battery charger on 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 a, a big car battery, and I said, well, I'm only using it to show because it had a little meter on it to so show, to show the, the power percentage of uh, yeah. charge. So. It was, it was fairly dead. I mean, it was something like fifty-three percent, and uh, I set the thing going, and uh, I was saying, I was saying on the video, look, okay, so, uh, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's up at fifty-three percent. Oh, fifty-four percent. You know, as as I was talking, it was being charged with this little thing. Yeah, it's a tiny little battery. It was like so. It's done, and it, 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 the crazy thing is, is it's almost like uh, the. People are having to come up with this and work this out themselves. Where yeah. we, if if corporations and if big business, the mainframe, were even thinking about this, we'd already have this. Mm. Everybody would have it, wouldn't they? Yeah. Like in the, in a way that it can be worked. Because at the moment, if you say to somebody, okay, take this little disc thing, or you know the Bedini at the moment, because I know this is a work in progress. Um, take this and go and go and people are just they can't do that. Yeah. Because we've we've become lazy. Yeah. So we don't want to learn how to make our own energy. Yeah, we want to turn the switch on because life's fast. Yeah, we ain't got time. We ain't got time to do this. Come on, well, come on, Dave. I've got, to, I've got to pay my bills. <laughs> I've got time to go. I've got no time to learn about this or, mm. or do some research on there because I'm watching EastEnders at eight. Yeah. I've got no time to watch your video <laughs> about energy yeah. or sustainability. Do you think I've got time to grow vegetables, eh? What? Well, I can go to Morrison's and get GSM ones. Well, come on. That's that's the thing. That's the key because what we don't realise in this in this society is that we're children. You know, we're we're forcibly kept as children and and all the all the things you just said because okay. like, i don't grow my own veg yeah. you know i don't grow my own veg i i, I, I want to come and film people on the sofa and tell them things i don't want to grow my own veg but nobody nobody even makes it accessible because i, I live on a boat mm. i can't even grow veg on a boat well i probably could grow some tomatoes but not enough to sustain me no. and then you've got to work for a good six months or eight months to really nurture the land what i've been told from mm. people that are have done it and then once you've got a bit of land though I have also got friends who've said s smaller than much smaller than your garden like a quarter of that and they're growing loads of food mm. like they have to give it away to the neighbours so I have to talk to you about um, aquaponics then because if you're on a boat I mean there's uh, there's ways there's, there's ways, ways exactly it. do you mm. see what I mean so there's always ways but how um, and not digressing but you know it's it's almost at what point Will people make that change? Because they don't want to make it because it doesn't affect them. Exactly. Uh, you know, um, the, people are starting to hear that uh, you know things are bad. You know, um, things are a lot worse in America right now. Yeah, but uh, a lot of the people don't realise it. You lived there for how long? I, I lived there for twelve years. Twelve years. I've been been back for about six months. So now. you've been back in England for six months, and out there you've noticed that a, a lot. A lot more because it's more vast as well, isn't it? Yeah. So you've seen the changes. Uh, but is it is it in the in the mainstream media though? Are people? Oh no! In the mainstream no media, you know the you know the, reco the recovery. Yeah, recoveries. You know, coming coming along and yeah. you know the main, mainstream media is, is you know lying out of its ass and it's yeah. uh, you know and people are buying it. Same know? here though, right? I, mean, yeah. I drove through the central London the, the other day and I just from the the information I'm receiving and and, and the message that I'm trying to share with people to really you know. Uh, wake up to themselves and release the fear and and sort of you know uh, go within and see the truth mm. that's that's the, that's what I'm sharing with people and when I drive through the city and I see people just completely numb I mean spending their whole week in a job they don't like to then go at the weekend to go to Debenhams and wherever else to buy some items of clothing to then go home and have a cup of tea and sit down it's just I, I mean people might think I'm crazy but that's just 
that's lost, that's numb. You're not seeing what's going on because nobody's telling you. It's, it's like the last scene in, in the film The Matrix, you know, when Neo steps out of the, uh, the telephone booth. Yeah. yeah and it's it. and he's he knows what's going he's on in it. but all around him are yeah. these people in almost walking in slow motion in in a fog yeah not knowing yeah you know it's it's like that sometimes it's like uh, you know it's like like me talking to my friends at work and yeah. saying don't drink that stuff yeah you know but people but also then people's argument because I, I know friends i have friends also that you know just again not open to uh, to any of the information and not wanting to go on that journey but also would then just come back and go it's just fear mongering mm -hmm. it's just scared you're scared it's a futuristic thing it's all fear I, nothing's happening and so on but I, I i say well actually it's not fear it's about how you can actually live a really pure life because you don't need to be involved in the the illusion the lies mm. and and be sucked into um, you know materialism and attachment to things and and all this stuff which detaches you from actually connection and love and and joy and maybe living sustainably mm. growing your veg and, and then being creative and doing what you want creatively whether it be s telepathy whether it be you know whatever yeah you know even if it's just wanting to play be a musician but you're not allowed to be a musician because you've got to get to work mm. Yeah, in a job that you don't really want to do, to pay for a system that doesn't actually need paying other than the mainframe, mm. they want to make money, right? Yeah. But, you know, I, I don't call... When, when people say, yeah, that's, you know, you be negative and it's all fear and stuff, I, I, I say, actually, it's the opposite, because the only way fear can exist is if you're ignorant. Mm. If you don't know what, what's... You don't know about something, you can be scared of it. Yeah. But if you know about it, you can't be scared of it. Yeah. If you know about yeah, something, you, yeah, you know it. You understand yeah, it. You understand it, and you, 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 it's not fear then. And you can also move yourself away from any potential fear anyway. Yes, you know, be, having knowledge of something dispels fear. Mm. Yes, yeah, totally. So you know, I, I and, and yes, and also uh, uh, unconditional love, for example, and, and telling you that is, has no opposite. I said to you earlier. So once you once you're in that place of of, of no fear, i.e., and we mentioned death. You don't fear death, you don't fear loss. Mm. Loss and death are the two main things that everybody fears. Because mm. even talking about a, a, a Bellini, a, a, what's it called again? Bedini. The, 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 <laughs> I'm going to call it Bellini. <laughs> the Bedini, the, be, the, the, the Bedini machine or, or how to grow your own veg or, or that, you know, structures are falling. Because we're attached to that, because we fear loss, so we fear the death of that, you know, mm. using death, not just death of the vessel, but death of the, the paradigm. Because they fear that so much, we're either, you know, we're either in fear of life or, mm. or terror of death. Yeah. But when you access the place of love, knowing and, 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 and just being comfortable in who you are, then there's no fear. Because yeah. if, right. no, if there's no fear of death, no fear of loss, what you've got to fear? Nothing. Yeah. So you can live. Exactly. I mean, well, before we um, moved to uh, America, um, we, we sold and gave away all our possessions because we didn't want to drag all everything over there. Uh, we heard everything in, in, in the States was cheap. cheap so yeah. so we, we got rid of everything. And um, for a week or so before, before we left, you know, we, we were floating around. We had some money, but um, we had nothing, you know. Just out there. Well, no, before we actually le left, okay. we, were, we were sort of uh, hanging around before our flight was, was due. We, um, I think we stayed at uh, my, my parents and, and my wife's parents and stuff. Yeah. Um, but for that period, we had nothing. It, th there was an awful lot of freedom. Yeah. This sense of freedom that, you know, we've got nothing. Yeah. It was, it was, it was brilliant. Yeah, it felt good. Yeah. But yeah. then... You know, you, you, you got over there, you bought a load of stuff. You end up buying <laughs> stuff, and, and it all piles up. You bought more because it's cheaper in the yes. states. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it's cheaper. We can get two for one over yes. here. We we'll take, we'll, we'll take that. Um, okay, so just coming back to the 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 sure. the, 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 the beautiful. Um, the beautiful idea from the book and then you got into the V. So the sustainable, where are you up to in relation to that exploration? Right, well, um, initially my idea when I, when I got back here was um, I was going to uh, try and build uh, um, one of these houses um, and, uh, and maybe get, you know, try and gather a few people to, to help me and, and stuff. Um, but then as I started talking about it to people, I was on a few uh, Freeman sites um, and I, I, I talked to people about that on there because obviously they they got the whole idea that uh, you know this world isn't quite what we we what think it is. It, yeah. um, so I started talking to a few people and I I started getting a lot of interest and a lot of people were 
you know, not only wanting to help out, but they, they wanted to, you know, be a part of it. Lovely. Um, so I, I, I put a website together and um, um, put a forum on it and, and, you know, people, you know, if you build it, they will come. And literally we've, um, we, uh, unfortunately one of the websites that I was uh, talking to people on actually just closed up suddenly. So maybe 50 people on there that uh, were interested just disappeared overnight. Okay, interesting. Um, but, uh, but, you know, we've, we started the, uh, the, the new website and, you know, we've got like, uh, you know, maybe 150 people um, actually actively on the, f or actually on the forum. Um, and are these people that actually want to take themselves out of the society that they're in at the moment and create a sustainable Yeah, they want to they create it. Some of them want to be part of it. Some of them just want to help out. And, 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 um, and, 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 and others yeah. want to see how it works and then... Yeah, and then maybe dip their toe in. Yeah, of course. In. Others want to do similar things. Yeah. And th they want to, you know, actually just, you know, help it to perform some like, kind of mutual help. And also, yeah. it's about it's also about having a bridge, isn't it? Because uh, it's just to throw this in there for people listening is that to go from this place to this place is mm. difficult, isn't it? It is. You know, it is. it's very difficult. We must we must always add that it's not it's not always just a, a real happy. Okay, now I know this, so I do this. Yeah. Oh, lovely! Everything's great. It doesn't work like that, does it? It so doesn't. You need to talk a bit and meet people and sure. you know what I mean interact and like you say I mean I did try and come and see you I just must put this in there I did I did actually <laughs> drive to to see one of the locations that Dave and the, a group of people were at in Grantham and you're probably going to see this uh, I was showing Dave earlier a clip of me that uh, basically the car was in broke down and broke down on the uh, on the on the bloody dual carriageway uh, 20 miles when I 20 minutes or 20 miles yeah. from um, from where all the guys were meeting. Anyway, that's another story. But they did. They were. You were looking at a piece of land, weren't you? And, and again, some people might just want to come along, look at the land, see what it's all about before they even, you yeah. know, stepping stones. Yeah. I mean, we had a, a great turnout for that. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people turned up, and we were we were sort of experiencing land because there was there was something um, really nice about this land. It, it seemed perfect for what we wanted. Um, unfortunately, we uh, we. We kind of um, met one of the neighbours. They weren't um, happy. Well, <laughs> this is this comes back to uh, being uh, uh, an adult or, or being a child of the state. Um, you know, we, we we give our responsibility over to uh, other people to deal with, you know, our own issues basically. Yeah, of course. So when this neighbour met one of the uh, one of our um, one of our people on, on the site. Um, started talking to them. They were very nice. So a whole bunch of us, or a few of us, went over to uh, to their house um, to have a chat with them. And uh, yeah, they were very supportive, very friendly. Um, until um, we got back and found that they'd posted on our site basically that they they were going to oppose us. They uh, they'd, they'd phone the police, the council, um, the local paper. Oh, Christ. Um, they were get, you know, so they pulled you in, the face of the ego pulled you in, yeah. lied, made that it was all for it, and then bang. And, you know, complete I'm... Complete resistance. I'm... Uh, having gone into the free man movement and, um, and coming to the awareness that I have, um, I, I'm trying to live as a responsible adult, you know, um, taking personal responsility for my life. Yeah. Okay. Um, your actions, how my you speak, actions, how everything. you are, yeah. You know. How um, you live in. Yeah. Now, when I went to the, that guy's house, you know, I, I, I looked the guy in, in the eye and we, we spoke, we, I shook his hand. Now, to me, that is, that is you know, a, a, two adults communicating. At that time, I mean, I, I, I was no threat to him. Obviously, uh, if I was, he wouldn't have invited me into his house. Of course not. Um, and with other people. Yeah, with other people. Yeah. You know. Um, so when I shook that guy's hand, you know, I thought I was dealing with another um, responsible adult. Genuine as well. Yeah. Yeah. But this is, this is where the, this, the child mentality comes in. Because um, his view was he, you know, his real feelings, he couldn't actually express them to me. Which we're talking about deep, because the people scared to share their deep communication. Right. Because if he could have turned around and goes, oh, I don't really like the sound of it, you might have even then been able to have a communication about 
what e it exactly. is, what it's about, and, and even maybe put himself at ease and opened up his channels. Yeah, I mean, uh, there were so many options. If he yeah. if he turned around and said, you know, I don't feel comfortable about this, yeah. um, we could have just talked about it, and yeah. we could have come to some kind of mutual agreement. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you or, and you could have been open to his feelings yes, as well, exactly. which would have also helped you move on, and develop in a different area. Exactly, because you know, because you you're not by any means trying to invade somebody's area <laughs> and go, hey, get out! We're all coming in here. We're some. I got to bring this up. A cult or you know sect, and you know we're the love bloody bandits or whatever. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. It's, you know, it's like it is a mutual interaction, isn't it? Right. So if if he'd said that, I mean, we could have talked about it. We could have come to some accord. Yeah. You know, but he didn't. What he did was hold back his feelings. Yeah. You know, um, put on a mask of uh, you know f um, friendliness and uh, you know helpfulness and stuff, and then went to his parents or the council or yeah. whoever and said, oh. Yeah. You know, we got we got uh, yeah. we got these anarchists coming in. So yeah. do something about it, please. Yeah. You know. And, and, but this is a this is a great example of how um, I heard somebody say that as this transformation occurs and as people start to really claim back their selves, their life, their love, and and, and, and who they are, and so on, mm -hmm. then a lot of people are going to be open to that and ready to that. But then when the big shifts come, when when certain systems do hit the fan and there's nobody to call. Then everybody's really like that's when people are going to be the, the worst. I feel I feel for those people because you're going from such a place of thinking that your 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 reality is as it is and that's your life and mm. so on to actually just taken from under you, isn't it? Right. Yeah. And then it's like you know, for example, if you're not aware to any of this information or <clears throat> you're not au fait to a few sites and in, you know you're just going to be you're going to be in fear, right? Even more. Exactly. Because what's going to happen is the the collapse will come. Um, and and that's, that's another thing why people don't realise that the collapse is coming because um, people have a big problem dealing with the idea of exponential collapse or mm. exponential anything, mm. yeah? It's not, um, with an exponential curve, you don't see um, something coming until it's too late. Yeah, right at that, at that, that point. Yeah, yeah. it's like uh, if, you go to, if a kid goes to a, a sweet jar yeah, and takes one sweet out the first time, and, and a couple of minutes later it goes and gets double each time, yeah, he won't realise that the jar looks empty until the jar's half half full, yeah, yeah? and then the next stop would be, it's empty. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah, it's it, goes, like, it goes, dorm, dorm, and yes. it's that, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because it, 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 the, the curve grows. Yeah, and you see that even in property and everything, don't yeah. you? It's, it's just, that, that curve is the same. Except now the curve is going downwards. Yeah. And um, you know we're not seeing it, yeah. but uh, by but the time it, the most the, the majority of people see it, it's going to be too late. It is too late, and, and I do sometimes. I often think to myself, I, and I think about this a lot, and, and not in a place of fear, but in a place of of um, I'm not even going to say hope or anything, because I spoke to somebody the other day, and somebody said, you know, I live by everything's happening as it should. Yeah, yeah. and 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 uh, the person I was speaking to said, you know. The planet's ever abundant, and you know it's full of resources that we need, and it's you know it will it will uh, replenish itself as it needs to replenish itself, and as the oil runs out, there will be another energy source, and I, and I get that, I totally appreciate that. Like mm -hmm. what you said earlier, we're evolving, and, 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 and you know everything will come, but that doesn't mean that there's not going to be some form of upheaval for there to be for there right. to be some form of of change, because in my experience, there has to be upheaval before there's ever a change, because there has yeah. been within my transformation I know there has been in yours so if you again if you do take that from that core as a ripple effect and you look at that there has to be upheaval right yeah now some are mentioning that it's the earthquakes it's the you know tidal waves it's like you know there's certain things coming in relation to the planetary shifts but even if you just come into individual shifts and then into society you know there has to be mass change because even at the moment people are feeling the, the crux of just by the, the change in prices and stuff and yeah. everybody's got no money and they're getting stressed and, and, and also everybody can feel this shift in energy that's coming at the moment. I don't yeah. know if you've noticed this, but oh, there's yeah. massive shift in energy. And, and time seems to be speeding up. Time seems to be speeding up. Everybody's worried. Nobody knows. Everybody's running around like, a, like, like you know, lost in the sand. You know, um, and now I know on the surface there seems to be still business as usual. Mm. But if you look at certain things like um, shark waters, the cove, collapse, um, the the uh, crude oil, 
uh, you know, uh, they, they, there's many, many documentaries, that, uh, Food Inc. And you just look at some of these documentaries, mm. all of them, they're not all depressing. Now, they do change your paradigm slightly. And when you watch them, you know, I'm not saying you jump around with joy after because, you know, they're showing that you said earlier some real home truths, mm. as it were. But if you just look at this, the amount of content that's coming out in relation to the problems that we're facing, in relation to the way we're living, something like your idea has to happen, doesn't it? Yeah, it has to happen, but uh, there are forces that are aligned against it. Um, you know, the, the powers that be know the collapse. You know, they're, they're creating it, after of all. Of course. Yeah. Um, so they have, they have uh, the next stage... Um, in the know, bag. In the bag, waiting. Yeah. Just like waiting. wars are created. Yeah, yeah. In the bag. They've got that waiting for us, waiting in the wings to push on us when we get... We, we're so Swine desperate. flu. Yeah. In the bag. Yeah, but we, 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 we slightly diverse, uh, you know, diverted swine flu. But yeah, we did. But there's another one coming. Yeah, there'll always be another yeah. one coming. It's and it always like, has been. Yeah, it's just like um, the... Uh, What's that? What was that um, uh, vote in Ireland? The, uh, no, the European yeah. well, it was referendum. A, yeah, well, it was all uh, it was all under the table. Right? It was it was you know they voted no, but they came back afterwards. No, go and vote again. Yeah, until you get the right answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you get another chance. Yes, yeah. keep going. So that's the thing. You know, if we defeat, we, we defeated swine flu essentially because you know people woke up. People to woke it up to it and didn't said, they? you know, I, I ain't taking that I'm vaccine. Not, and the way that they were doing it as well, very really like, for example, my uh, my friend who's got a daughter, they were just sending out in, in, invitations into people's houses. Oh, mm. do you mind if we test the swine flu on your daughter? Yeah. What the hell? So, so, okay, go on, sorry to stop your flow, no, no, but so, do you see what I mean? That is so... Yeah, so, so yeah, they, they, they threw swine flu at us and, and we, were, we went, oh, no, don't think so. Um, but they're going to come at, at, at us again. Yeah. They're going to come at us, at us with something even worse than... Because flu, you know, we've, we've all had the flu, yeah. you know, so it's not as frightening as, as you know, yeah, other to, things yeah, could be. Yeah, they need, to, they need to bring in other So things. they're going to bring in something else that's even more frightening and, you know, the fear will make people take the vaccine. That's, that's a trick. They want us to take the vaccine. Yeah. So um, if that doesn't work, if that's not scary enough, they'll bring something else even more scary. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 just pl and just win the game or try to win the game on fear. Yeah. Um, it's, it's funny, I don't know if you've read a book by Ben Alton called Blind Faith, but uh, the, you know, he, he, he talks about the, you know, the, you know, just the mass numbness of humanity. Mm. You know, and you've got to remember that everything that's happening, I don't know if you feel this, but everything that's happening um, on the planet in relation to the human species is a foundation of fear and hatred. It's, the, it's a foundation of people hating themselves and perpetuating actions of fear, you know, constantly. Yeah. And, and it, this is not even rocket science. And don't, don't get me wrong, I live in a beautiful place, in a beautiful space in my uh, uh, reality. I see beauty every day because I connect to that every day. I choose to connect to that every day. Mm. I choose to uh, read positive stuff and I choose to absorb myself with positive people and like-minded people. This yeah. is not all doom and gloom. I'm not, I'm not up every day in arms getting scared and worried. I'm actually, like you went, went for your run and, you know, connecting to the wonder. I mean, I was sat in a, a, a crop circle the other day just connecting to nature and, you know, the point is, is that, but people have to see, you almost have to see the lies yeah. to know the truth, don't you? Yep. And until you wake up and see the lies, which is a bit uh, disheartening, yeah. a bit scary. Initially it is. Initially, yeah. don't you? You mm. agree? It's a bit, you know, a bit depressing and for some. Frightening and as well. Frightening. Yeah. But once you see that, you can then see the truth and the amazing things that are happening, can't you? Yeah. Because there are amazing things happening. Well, you know, the, the fear and um, the, the problems in this world, you know, are, are, we all know it's caused by the, the, this elite, okay? And the elite control the media, they control, you know, pretty much everything around us. And through that control, that's, that's how we're, you know, we're acting out all this stuff. We're, we're, we're watching the TV and that's it. That's why they call them programs, yeah. you know. We're being programmed by it. We're being programmed by the, the TV, the radio, the, the internet, your computer, whatever. Your computer wizard, so you know about programs and yes, computers and absolutely. using the internet again and everything. It's, a, it's like a computer, right? Right. We're computers. But, you know, the, the, the universe is changing as well. Um, and I just found this out. Um, 
how how literally how we we're actually connected into the earth. Um, I always thought that the brain controlled everything, you know, in in your body, um, but it's actually the heart. Mm -hmm. And the heart. Lovely, lovely to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Being a mad, mad love addicted man, I am in my love cult. <laughs> but not, not even in that way. No, it's, I know. It's like I know. A, yeah. The heart is this uh, electromagnetic transmitter receiver. It's, you know, it produces a magnetic field that extends about eight feet beyond your body. Okay, um, and it sends signals to the brain, and the brain sends signals out to everything else. It's um, it, it, it's like this big communications network yeah. because the heart receives signals from the earth and the earth is um, there's, a, there's a thing called um, the Schumann cavity re resonance, I don't know if you've heard of no, it no. okay, the earth um, pulses uh, you know, sends out these electromagnetic pulses um, and for, for, for thousands of years that pulse has been at around seven cycles a second Okay. Yeah. Um, and and just recently, just recently, it started to speed up, and um, it's coming up towards uh, I think thirteen cycles a second. So this is talking about the cycle speeding up that we spoke about that time. Yes. Way, yeah. Time. Yes, that's yes. why time seems, that seems to be, be faster up as well because the cycles within us are speeding up. Because we the we receive our signals from the Earth. And if the Earth because speeding through up. our heart. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And the Earth receives its signals from the Sun. Ah. Because the Sun is going through some massive changes. Yeah. I was, changes. I was only reading in the New Scientist the other day, and in uh, you know the National Geographic, loads of places have been yeah. writing about it. Yeah. So you know, it's it's obvious. The Sun is sending out signals. The Earth is receiving them. The Earth is sending those signals on to every living thing on the Earth. You know, the, every animal that runs around. Is getting the same signal through its heart. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. And, and so the energy again. Now we're tapping into something much vaster than we're even aware of because yeah. we're not aware. Nobody's aware of the energy, the chakras, the auras, the, the electromagnetic uh, magnetic um, vibration. And as soon as you open your mind to that, then you start to tap into the unknown. Yeah, which we, we, shouldn't, we don't even see. Well, the sun gets its signals from the centre of our galaxy. Um, and I said, um, mind blowing. It is. And but beautiful, I love it. It is. <laughs> the th funny thing, I'm, I'm a bit strange because um, I have something I call the cloud. Yeah. Okay. Um, when I try and figure something out, I mean, I just, I, I just, it's like I throw all the jigsaw puzzle pieces that I've got, and I throw them up into a space in my head, and over, you know, without thinking about it, over the course of some time, you know, it looks like I've got lo lo loads of little librarians up there. Trying to fit the pieces together, yeah. and eventually something will pop into my head. It's like, oh, well, that's it. I see the connections now. Yeah, yeah. And start linking. Things start linking together. Yeah. And no, he's not mad. You I'm know, not, don't, no, don't worry. Please, <laughs> please. Don't, don't start coming around here with a bloody straitjacket. I'm, <laughs> I'm a witness on camera <laughs> to the world. He's not crazy. Uh, but um, or maybe we are crazy, and we're the crazy ones. Are actually the same ones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who knows? But God, Who knows? Sorry. Um, no, uh, one of the things, um, you know, we're again, talking about this idea of signals and, and stuff, you know, being transmitted from the central universe, the sun to, you know, to the, the animals, animals, to the animals. earth, to us, to everything. And, and when they get to us, it doesn't stop there because, you know, those signals get transmitted to our brain and our brain transmits it to all our cells. Yep. And then it's downwards, really and cells so on and so on. Into the organism because we're a cell that makes up the organism, which is the big it's, cell, which is the planet exactly, Earth. Exactly, that's why. It, that's what I was saying. Yeah. We're in the middle. We ourselves here, as you know, corporeal yeah. beings, Little we're just sitting organisms. in the middle of this yeah. this whole infinite um, cycle, up above and below. Yeah. And, um, and, and when you talk like this as well, I know it, it, for for some listening, it might be like, oh man, it sounds well far out. But it's also uh, it's, uh, it's something we should also understand is that we try to. We live our lives with these like uh, vowels and consonants and and sounds in our our mouth, you know, ooh, ah, ch, you mm -hmm. know, and a e i o u and so on. Yeah? Yeah. And we and with those little sounds and those little words, we try to try to describe and explain the infinite inf infinite universal bloody intelligence of everything. And it's just not possible, is it? So uh, you know, do you see what I mean? Yes, it's actually definitely not possible yeah. with with our language now, yeah. English. Yeah. It's now especially English because. Um, again, part of my research, I'm going to find this, that uh, English has been manufactured 
and it's it's been manufactured. I'm, um, this is new for me, so I can't remember all the details. No, that's fine. But it's been manufactured um, because the original languages, like Sanskrit and, uh, and and the ancient languages, the words actually had power. Okay. They had they had some kind of um, meaning and connection. Well, not just more more than just meaning. Yeah. Have you, have you heard of cymatics? Yeah, yeah, I've heard well, of cymatics. Sound what are the sound into I just heard about form. The, yeah, just recently I've heard that about because I told you I see that uh, sacred ge geometry talk. Yeah, that's right. And on cymatics, I don't know if you've, you've seen the video. I'm sure. Yeah. Just a little four or five minute video where they're doing the sound. And that, is it flour that they put on there or rice? Yeah, some kind something, of something. Yeah. Yeah. And it does shapes and so on. So that's communicating a language. That's sound creating form. Okay. 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 Now, some of the ancient languages, um, the sounds you make in some words actually create form. Whether they create uh, um, they create emotion that creates form or some, but the sound had power. Yeah, well, and it still does. I mean, people are doing it, sound it healing daily and it constantly. Does. I actually just read a, a story um, two days ago that um, people, young people, are getting um, are downloading. Uh, um, the, this not music but sounds that act like drugs. Oh, there you go. Um, you download it onto your iPod and you play it to yourself and really loud, and it, it yeah. simulates a, a, a drug trip. Yeah. Well, 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 well that's, that's, like, that's like the lucid dream in the dreams, though, right? Mm. Because I don't know if you've heard it, you can listen to certain... certain uh, Binaural beats. You exactly, know. and mm. then that takes you into a, to a, a different dream state, yeah? Right. So what's happening now is kids are tapping into that, realising that for a sound, I can transcend somewhere else. Well, I think it's uh, less... It, it, less uh, not so, not so spiritual good. Spiritual than that. It's is more it? a drug hit. Okay, rather okay. Rather than that, you know. So it's actually not necessarily uh, for, a, for a, uh, an enjoyable experience. Obviously, there's always good and bad. And, yeah, and of course. You know, there's no. It's, that's just evaluation. Yeah. But um, the point is that sound has more power than we. No, we're even aware of. Even aware of. Yeah. And um, our our language has been has been manufactured so that uh, the sounds don't away. have power anymore. Interesting. You know, I, I I believe, and again, this is new, so I'm going to have to, um, you know, go over it a few times before it's in my head. Um, but get it in your cloud. Yeah, get it in my cloud. That's it. It's, <laughs> that's what it's exactly. It. It's yeah. up there. Yeah, yeah. Something's it's flitting around. Because some, yeah, yeah. I've never heard of it. I know that it sounds powerful, but even you know, you're frying it out there, aren't you? You fry it into the ether yeah. and see what comes back. I mean, uh, if you think uh, with language, it's, it's very interesting because language, um, we we have today. We have this uh, very watered down version of of what was true. Yeah, of course. Um, Chinese whispered. Yeah, it's like um, we we've forgotten the real meaning of of what it is, but yeah, we've words. got like a hint yeah. in our in our consciousness of what it means. It's like you know magic. Mm -hmm. um, it's a magic spell. Yeah, we use the word spell, don't we? We spell yeah. words. Yeah, of course. Words have power. Words have magic. Yeah. But we don't see that anymore. We no, just we see lost the magic. Well, words are thrown away. Yeah. Hence, you know, you we say see. you say I love my country, and you kill people. Yeah. You know, for the love. Of, you know, you know what I mean. We use the word love. I mean, this is something I've spoken to a good friend who's big on the words as well, and he's just like, breaking down the words and, and what does that word mean and so on. And he sent me a whole heap of stuff, which I mean, you know, again. All it makes you realise is that the words have lost complete meaning. Right. And that's why it's so difficult to articulate why I brought this up. It's so difficult to articulate even what we're sharing with words. Because if anybody's listening, they naturally, you will naturally latch onto a word that you believe you know the, um, uh, the definition of. And then that will allow you to then take into your, your mind, depending on whether it's conscious, unconscious, awake, uh, asleep, egoic or love, and then determine whether you judge us from that. Do you see mm, what I mean? Yeah. So then it's like, okay, well they've mentioned free man movement. Okay, well I know about that from your little understanding of that will then instantly judge what we're talking about or and, and so on do you see yeah, what i mean yeah so words are so we need them but they're so misleading yes they are and um there's been a conscious push to uh restrict our access to words mm. restrict the number of words we use we our vocabularies you know because we think in words yeah and if you re restrict the number of words you can use then you restrict the amount of thought you can have yeah you know, if you, th if you think the kids today, you know, they're thinking in tech speak. Yeah, yeah, I know. You know?
Yeah. Their vocabularies and, and education is so atrocious now yeah. that their vocabularies are shrinking. Yeah. Which course. means their, their range of thought is shrinking. Yeah, totally. You know? But then it's interesting you bring that up because also one of the ways to also connect into a diff different place of connection, which, uh, which, which, which we've mentioned, is that to disconnect from thinking. Because, mm. you know, uh, if you meditate and st so on, then, you know, the art is to, you know, observe your thoughts as, as the observer, the space between your thoughts, but mm -hmm. also detach from thoughts. Because as you detach from thoughts, you connect to a more of a bliss, knowing, nirvana, or whatever, you know, whatever, again, words you want to, you can't label it, but you see what I mean? Yeah. So, so there's also that level of detaching from thought can be a good thing as well. Just to encapsulate just because if people have been really intrigued with your, your idea and I know we, we sort of went, went wherever we went there which is what the sofa is all about <laughs> and it's beautiful is that where, where are you up to uh, just to sort of not, mm. in, not in closing but where are we up to in, in seeing maybe seeing some if people are interested in if they see this video and they're interested in these possible sustainable um, you know um, living and so on, you know, where are we up to? Well, right now, I mean, because we had a little uh, knockback with, uh, with the lands that we were planning to buy, um, we're looking at actually making a land claim. How many of these places would you like to have? Um, well, the idea is once, um, once you've got one small community, okay, you can just keep building them. It's, it's like the internet. Yeah, you like can, you said. You yeah. can grow this network. Yeah, yeah. So, so you've got a community it. of people that are coming to the site and so on. What's the name of the site? It's uh, the Freeman League. The Freeman League. Yeah, the FreemanLeague.com. FreemanLeague.com. Yeah. So you got so you're building up. That's your website. Yes. And you're building up a, a community on there, like you said, the forums and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. The uh, the problem is, of, of course, we're gonna at some point um, ha come up against the establishment. Yeah. Because as we said, they they don't want us to uh, yeah to break away from their their society. They want us well, in there. But do you think also? Them. Rather than there being having to be, and I'm not saying there won't be, but rather than there having to be conflict, do you also think that the more and more people that go in, and the more and more people that wake up, then you, you you change the reality from the inside out? Do you see what I mean? So yeah. you actually you, you actually you, you don't need to get into conflict and so on because there will just be more and more people that just say, well, this is this is how it is. This is the truth and this is the way. Right. Now, I know you've got that going on there. I know they might end up, it might end up in violence and people have said it might end up in war and, you know, conflict, but, but there can't be war again if people are not wanting war. Right. So as you connect to yourself, it's only, you can only have an argument with somebody if they want an argument, yeah. right? Takes two to tangle. Exactly. A tangle? Tango. tango. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, and a tangle. Yeah. A tango and a tangle. Yeah. But yeah, so do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so well, knowledge wakes you up Indeed. And then hopefully no conflict. Exactly. Um, part of the project is also um, having a, a, a very open public face. Um, the idea isn't just to save our asses and you know go off and live yeah. separately from everybody else. Yeah. It's to say, um, look, everyone. Yeah. You know, we can have normal, normal se seeming lives. Yeah, exactly. But without money, without work, without yeah. you know any all, all, all this fear. And I think also just coming back to is that the more you connect to yourself, the more even with all of these ideas and all of these possibilities and all, all of the many, many myriad perspectives, mm. per perspectives, if you come back here, you really can find peace, calm, tranquility and, and observation, can't you? Yeah. To, to then be able to deal with whatever comes. Okay, guys, well, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you've, uh, you've got a lot from, uh, from our, our talk today. Um, I know we, uh, we sort of, uh, we got quite hot at one point because we went off, we went up, I went into the cloud of Dave's mind and we was all over the place. But uh, um, I, I'm sure it will, uh, it will make sense if you're watching it. Maybe I'm not, not sure it makes sense to me, <laughs> to be sure. honest. Maybe it don't make sense to us either. But uh, no, listen, thank you very much. And um, yeah, thank you for your time. I know... We live in an age where time, as they've pointed out today, is speeding up because of cycles and we don't have time to listen to people and so many people sharing information and we don't know what to do or what to listen. But I think we both agree, and tell me if I'm wrong, just calmly come back to yourself. Trust yeah. yourself. Get out of the head and into the heart, which is where we're communicating from. And it doesn't seem so scary. It's not scary. It's, it's, um, it's not scary. Exactly. Yeah. 
It's, it's hard. We, we have an idea of, we have an inkling of uh, what's real and what's true. I mean, yeah. we, we know, again, not, I'm, I'm not a spiritual person really, but we know it yeah, in here somewhere it. yeah. if, it's, if it's true or not. Exactly. Um, but, so you trust know, in yourself. You have to let go of the fear as well. Let go of the fear and trust in yourself. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you. Thank you.